we are going to be using real hemp to restring the joints on a bagpipe. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel, I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like the kind of content you see, think about uh, liking the video, subscribing if you can. All that makes it easier to keep making these kind of videos. Now, on with the video. For those of you that have been following this channel for any length of time, you know I've done videos on stringing bagpipe joints using both uh, traditional um, hemp, which is really shoe repair linen, as well as polyester thread, which I've had tremendous success with. That said, I had quite the phone call this past weekend from a Mr. Ted Anderson, who supplies uh, several places with real hemp and other supplies like um, this uh, cobbler's wax right here. And he took a little bit of um, issue with how I was discussing putting hemp on the joints. And I wanna make it clear, I'm making these videos to, to provide the best knowledge and experience I can for you guys. And if I'm doing something wrong, I need to know about it. So I really appreciate people getting in touch with me if it means I can make better videos. And what he pointed out to me is I had recommended using beeswax on the tenon. Now that had been taught to me by at least two, if not three people, doesn't mean it's right though. What uh, Mr. Anderson pointed out is that beeswax ultimately is a lubricating wax. The beeswax, it's sticky at first, but then very quickly gets very slick under the fingers. So what I was doing, in his opinion, was basically setting the joints up to fail by putting beeswax on there. I was told that the beeswax melting together with the cobbler's wax on the string melted together to help bond um, the string to the joint. But that may not be the case. I had tried to use real hemp with that combination of beeswax and cobbler's wax and had no success. After a few months, all of the joints were slipping, twisting, and failing. So I took it all off and started looking for other options, eventually finding the polyester string. Now that being said, I want to give this another good try. So I have some two-ply hemp here, and I have some of uh, really good smelling cobbler's wax. It's handmade with pitch. In any case, it actually has a little bit of a label on it. It's still somewhat brittle, but it's not quite as bad as some of the other ones I've worked with lately. I'm going to rehemp both of the joints on my middle tenor, and I've also rehemped the joint on my practice channel. So that, as you can see, has real hemp on it. Now, the lining on this particular set is plastic lined. So for that, I actually used a little bit of the hemp seal to kind of make a good seal between the hemp and the plastic. And it's going on quite nicely right now. I wanna see how this hemp holds up to moisture long-term. My other practice channel still has uh, the polyester string on it, and it's had the same string on it for quite some time now. So it'll be a nice one-two comparison and really see how this holds up and how much better it might do. But on this joint, we're gonna be doing both the stock fitting as well as the drone top fitting, and those have slightly different tensions. In looking at some of the articles on uh, Mr. Ted Anderson's website, he actually talks about the kind of nature of the hemp, if that'll get on there, the tendrils that comes out actually help make it all airtight. So when I'm done today, we're going to do a suction test on these joints as best we can to see if it needs any hemp seal on the outside of it or if it really does a great job just with uh, the hemp as it is. Okay, before we start, a few things. I recommend a dark shirt when you're working with cobbler's wax. Um, this stuff has a tendency to kind of slough off and break little chunks and bits. And I tend to like working it over a piece of foil if I'm going to be using a lot of it because the little bits, you might be able to actually get together and remelt into a nice little glob when you're done because this stuff can even shatter sometimes and you shouldn't have to keep rebuying it. Just go ahead, melt it all back when you're done and it works pretty good. I just stick it in like a toaster oven for a little bit on a low setting. It doesn't take very much heat for it to melt and do its thing. Okay, so we're going to start actually with the stock fitting. What I want to try to do, instead of the beeswax, I'm right now, I'm going to take the cobbler's wax and I'm going to get it warm in my hand. I can already feel getting slightly pliable in my hand. And I'm going to see if I can't rub just a little bit of the cobbler's wax itself on the joint. Now I'm going to see if maybe I can't just rub a little on here. So, see, in trying to color it, well, some's getting on there, but some is breaking off. Let's use the part right where my hand was, where it's kind of warm. Now, versus the beeswax, 
it's certainly not covering as well, and you're not going to be able to see it, but I can definitely feel a little on there. Again, I really want the string, whatever the string you're using, real hemp, shoe repair linen, polyester, I do not want it moving on the joint. So, I don't know if you can see any of the residue left in here, but it's definitely sticky. It's tacky to the touch. I like that. Now I'm going to take the first, I don't know, two-ish feet. And this is still pretty warm. I can actually, maybe you can see it bend a little bit. It's actually bending around my finger right there. Some of the other stuff, no matter how much you hold it, it's just going to break. I don't find that stuff tends to be quite sticky enough to do its job very well. Okay, and I'm just running my finger between, so you got the wax, you got the string, and I'm just coating the first mini feet. So there you can see, Ooh, and then it goes to, to black. Okay, so I have some nice wax uh, hemp, and this again is real hemp. Um, this was purchased from the Piper's Hut, as was the cobbler's wax I'm currently using. Um, I've bought everything you're seeing here. So I'm going to lay it across, and just to kind of show that it is sticky. Can you see that? The string is sticking to the tenon on its own between the wax on the, the string itself as well as what I put on the tenon. It seems to be nice and tacky, which is what I want. I have a feeling this is going to go fairly quickly because this two-ply hemp I'm using right here is pretty thick. All right, I got one full wrapping in the grooves. Get that foil out of the way. It's not in every single groove, but it's in most of them. And I feel pretty confident that's not going anywhere. So it's good. Now, as I like to do, I'm going to hemp the first third or so until I get a reasonable fit in the stock. And as people called out from one of my previous videos, it's not a fit mint. I guess that's a type of bookcase. I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap, and I have the pipes down here, and this is the middle tenor. And let's see how it fits. Uh, it's already getting, I'm already hearing it connect in there. Okay, now I'm gonna go actually to the very top of the joint now. And again, I want to, I'm gonna put a little bit more hemp on here so you can see what I'm talking about. And in this case, it's kind of fun that I actually get to use the word hemp and mean it. So, as I mentioned in all of my videos on stringing bagpipes, you want to make sure that you have a nice kind of gap between where the hemp is and the mount. Most modern makes already have that pre-grooved in there, so you don't really have to worry about it. If the grooves go too far to the mount, you might want to even skip one to give it a little bit of a break. Uh, some older makes of pipes I've seen, the whole thing is grooved top to bottom. You're going to want to give it some space on both sides so the hemp doesn't just, you know, come off the end or start splaying out on the mount, which is going to keep it from seating all the way. All right, so I talk also about this third, third, third. I want to make sure the air flow going to the drone stops right here and that we have a good fit here. And now I'm also making sure it has a good fit in the back. I'm almost making O-rings of sorts out of hemp. And then the final one will be the middle. I find this keeps the joint from being nearly as badly rounded. Often the middle of these joints gets very round rather than, you know, nice and level. All right, that's starting to fit pretty good. I'm going to start filling in now the middle section of this joint with the hemp. And again, I have the string wrapped around my fingers. I have a decent amount of tension. This hemp is nice and thick. I don't feel overly concerned about it breaking. In fact, I even have a knife right here to cut it if it doesn't want to snap in my fingers. Now I'm kind of turning the joint around and making sure that, like right there, you can see there's a, if the light's not too bright, there's a black area where I have missed putting some hemp in. So I'm gonna go ahead and string a wrap or two in there, and now it's looking very even. Very even, very fluffy all around the outside. That's that's pretty good. It's a little loose. This right now is more of a stock, or excuse me, more of a tuning slide fit that's slightly loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep adding 
a little more hemp, but now I'm going in relatively wide passes. Probably, hmm, not quite, a, not quite an eighth of an inch apart as I'm kind of putting it down. I'm not going groove, 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 groove. That's gonna add a lot of string and make it tight really fast. But this hemp is nice and soft. It's, uh, it's kind of a nice fit in there. I do remember really liking this stuff when I first started using it. Uh, it was just that the joints were failing and uh, it appears that was user error as I might have, as I kind of even suspected in the last video. So I appreciated uh, Mr. Anderson getting in touch with me. Okay, here we go. I think right there, I think we have a really nice fit. Yeah, that I think is gonna work out great. Tie a little half hitch, so go around, kind of make a small opening with my fingers, pass one part of it through, tie a nice little knot, and that's just kind of nice to keep it, it tends to not want to unravel that way. And for now, I am not going to add any hemp seal. I wanna give this a test and a go and see how it works without the hemp seal. I'm also curious to see how much this may swell. Now, I understand it's a natural material and it's probably gonna swell to some small degree without this, I wanna see how it does compared to say these guys right here. We have a good fit here. Now let's move on to the tuning slide. With the tuning slide, everything is basically the same I just discussed. I'm gonna to wanna to start with the top third. I'll go to probably the bottom third and then fill in the middle. And again, I'm going to, this got cold, so I'm gonna hold it in my hand and feel it softening up. And I'm gonna to try to work just a little of this into the grooves. Again, it's not gonna get quite the even coverage that the beeswax did, but the beeswax seems to have been a bad idea. Color, color, color. So the black shirt I know makes some of this a little harder to see, but I was not about to ruin a shirt again. Guess who's ruined some shirts? Or jeans. I don't have one of my nicer pairs of jeans on. And I am doing it over, again, a piece of foil. You do it over something. Don't let it just get on your carpet or floor. It makes a mess. It'll melt into your tile or it'll destroy your carpet. Yeah, it's getting kind of tacky. It takes a little bit longer, but I think I'm rubbing it kind of quickly now to see if maybe I can generate just a little bit of heat and really have it melt just a little bit into those grooves. Now it's nice and tacky. Again, I'm gonna wax the first bit of this. And one of my first tests is always to make sure that it wants to stick. If not, I wanna add more wax to it. Is it gonna stick? Is it gonna stick? It's sticking, it's not going anywhere. Can you see that? The string's coming off of it. Okay. When I first apply, I don't do the third, the third, the third. I want relatively even coverage of the sticky against everything. There we go. All right, now let me demonstrate this. I only have the top third of the joint done, and yet I already have a nice fit on the drone that is holding its place. It's holding its tuning really nicely. So now all I have to do, do the bottom third, do the middle third. I'll say this hemp makes it a lot faster than polyester. Even with three spools of polyester going at once, um, it takes a little while to get in a full joint wrapped. And what's kind of nice, I can actually see, we might need to turn the brightness down on this camera. I don't know if you can see, there's little bits of brown from the, the bore of the drone. And that's actually helping me see where it's coming in contact with the hemp and where it's not. And that's helping guide me on where additional hemp might need to be added. I'm looking for it to be pretty even. Needs just a little bit more in the middle, which doesn't surprise me. It's the last place I put it. Nice, okay, we're gonna call that good. I can put the top on, as you see here, and with just a couple fingers, I'm able to move it. I'm not having to take my whole hand and crank the drone. And again, for now, I am not going to add hemp seal to this. I want to see if the natural properties of the hemp are gonna hold up or not. If I have to add hemp seal, no biggie and I'll let you guys know, because I'm gonna do a little experiment here I'll talk about in just a moment. So again, just tying a little half hitch to keep any of the hemp from unwinding. Cut off the extra. And here we have a classic looking joint if I've ever seen one. This, uh, this has 
real hemp on both sides on an African blackwood uh, part with uh, the satin wood mounts. It's uh, not an unattractive looking bit of pipe business right there. So let's see if it passes the suction test. We want to make sure that our pipes are fully airtight. If you have a leak anywhere around the top of your drone, it could be from between the, the bush and the cap or around the ring, anywhere like that, it's gonna make the drone stuffy and possibly difficult to strike in. It's not the end of the world, but it's best if it's airtight. So I wanna make sure this is airtight, pretty sure it is. Great, that's great, that's airtight. Now, no hemp seal on this, plug it in. Seems airtight without any hemp seal. That's great. So this is airtight, working great, no hemp seal. Here's the experiment I'm going to conduct for uh, myself and everyone else. I now have my middle redone with real hemp right here. I'm going to re-hemp probably my outer tenor with the method I've talked about that was the one waxed, one unwaxed yellow hemp that my first video on hemping was about. And I'm going to rewrap my base with polyester string. It already has polyester string on it, but I wanna make sure that I'm starting each of these from scratch. And I'm going to take notes of when I have to add any sort of either hemp or linen or string, depending on the joint. If I need to add hemp seal, or whatever, if the hemp starts becoming unairtight and it needs hemp seal, I'm gonna to try to make notes and I'm going to do this over the next, let's say six months. It's July right now. Let's check back in, I don't know, the new year. And let's see how I feel about all three of these joints. Now, it is my main set of pipes that I'm doing this on. If I feel something's going catastrophic or not working well, I'm gonna redo it. I'm not gonna sacrifice my playing, but I've had each of these methods work, so I think it's gonna be okay. And I'll be curious, as a player, how it works having three different types of, of joint material on my pipes at any given time. And I'll take notes, and I'll follow back with all you guys and let you know my thoughts on it. Well, again, special thanks to uh, Ted Anderson for reaching out to me and uh, suggesting that uh, maybe I try giving the hemp another go. And I'm going to put a card in my old videos linking to this one so folks can uh, maybe stop using the beeswax. That might not be the best idea from the information I've gotten. I'm going to, again, kind of test it against these and uh, see, make sure that this hemp is not uh, twisting after six months with just the cobbler's wax, but I don't suspect it will. But we'll find out. That's uh, going to wrap it up for us today. If uh, you like this video, please think about sharing it with uh, any other pipers in your life. Please subscribe to the channel. Maybe even head over to my Patreon. There's information down below where a small monthly donation goes a really long way to helping me make videos like this. And uh, always like the video. And comment below with your thoughts on everything we're doing here. All right, guys. I appreciate it very much. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.